The coordinate system is something that is very useful, especially uh, when dealing with linear functions. So we want to make sure you have a good baseline understanding of what the coordinate system is. All it means is you have a graph paper that is broken up into four quadrants. So they are divided vertically by the y-axis. So this line represents the values of y and the x-axis. So the horizontal line is x, the vertical line is y. Where those two points intersect, we'll just put a dot here, this is called the point of origin. This is the starting point for all of the different rays shooting out, up, down, whatever. Um, then, So we break these up into four different sections. This is called quadrant one, this is quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. Now there's some things that we know about the values that lie within this. We know if some point falls within this quadrant, it has a positive x value and a positive y value for it to go forward and up. So when we plot values on a coordinate plane, they're set up as an ordered pair, where the first value in the ordered pair represents that point's x value, then its corresponding y value to get to that particular location. So if I had, say I have this space right here, this red dot, and I wanted to identify its location, I count how far over it is. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six lines forward. So it has a six for its x, and then I count up, one, two, three, four, four lines up. So its, its coordinate is six and four. Now when we write it in this order, we don't have to specify its x and y. The rule is the first number is the x value, the second number is the y value. And if you notice the signs on both of them, they're both positive. So I know any point falling within this first quadrant has a positive, positive value. Here, in order to go to the left of the y-axis, x has to be negative. So our value is for the x is a negative, but I'm up above the x-axis, so my y is positive. So if I took this spot right here, my x would be negative 3, and y would be positive 3. Because I went back and then up. Now here, because I go back and then down, both of my x and y values are negatives. So only values where both of the numbers are negative are gonna fall within this quadrant. So if I had this location right here, I'm back two, so I'd have negative two for my x, and I'm down three, so negative three for my y. Now here, I have a positive x value because I went forward in front of the y-axis, so I'm going to have a positive x, but I then went down below the x-axis, so my y is going to be negative. So just by the signs, I at least know which quadrant I'm going to be looking at. Double positive, negative positive, double negative, positive negative. Okay? So that lets us at least get started in figuring out where things are located and how the coordinate plane is set up. If I'm given these points to plot on my coordinate plane, each one of them has a different dot color, red, black, yellow, and blue. So to find these spots and plot them, I need to find four on the x-axis, one, two, three, four, and then because I have a positive, positive, I know I'm in quadrant one, and I need to go up five, one, two, three, four, five. So here is the corresponding point for four and five. Here, I have zero and negative two. Whenever I have a zero as one of my ordered pair values, it means I'm going to be on the axis line. If I have zero for x, it means I'm not forward, or I'm not forward or back, I'm right on this y-axis. And it says I'm at negative two on the y-axis, so I count down two places, and I put my dot. Here, I have a positive six and a zero for the y. That means I have a forward value, but I don't have an up or down value because my y is zero. So I count up one, two, three, four, five, six, and I can put my dot right there. Finally, I see I have a double negative, which means I'm in quadrant three. Negative three means I go back three. Negative six means I go down six. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
and I can put my dot. So I have been able to plot all of my values by starting with finding its location forward or back in the graph and then up or down from there.